بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اتبع هداه أما بعد قال المؤلف رحمه الله تعالى فما من مخلوق في الأرض ولا في السماء إلا الله خالقه سبحانه لا خالق غيره ولا رب سواه ومع ذلك فقد أمر العباد بطاعته وطاعة رسله ونهاهم عن معصيته وهو سبحانه يحب المتقين والمحسنين والمقسطين ويرضى عن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات ولا يحب الكافرين ولا يرضى عن القوم الفاسقين ولا يأمر بالفحشاء ولا يرضى لعباده الكفر ولا يحب الفساد الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاكبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على ظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك لا إكرار به وتوحيدا وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد so tonight inshallah we're going to take the last part of what it consists of the belief of Qadr which is number what number four which is al khalq so tonight's title al khalq aw al khalq wal ijaduhu the creation and it's coming into existence. So we'll start off with, inshallah, Sheikh Al Fawzan, page 218. Just a few words to start off regarding this. Famamin Makhlukin fil ard, wala fi samai, illa Allahu khaliquhu subhanahu. That there is nothing from the creation in the earth and in the heaven except that Allah the Exalted is its creator. Shaykh Al-Fawzan, Hafizullah Ta'ala, regarding this, he says, هَذَا فِيهِ إِشَارَةٌ إِلَى مَرْتَبِتِ الرَّابِعَةِ This particular word in here, where we started, where it mentions that everything in the from the creation in the heavens and the earth, Allah is his creator. This now starts and is an indication of the fourth level, which is al-khalq. khalq wal ijad. That is the level of the creation, al-khalq, and it's coming into existence, meaning Allah Azza wa Jal bringing it into existence. So Shaykh uh, al-Fawzan, he says, فَكُلُّ مَا سِوَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ مَخْلُوقِ All that is besides Allah, our creator, is makhluk, is a created thing. And all of the actions, whether they are actions of good or bad, it stems from his creation and from the occurrence of bringing about. There is no creator besides him, nor is there a Lord besides him. The so Sheikh uh, Al Fawzan, he says, that after the author mentioned this, فَرَغَ الشَّيْكْ مِنْ ذِكْرِ مَرَاتِبَ الْقَدْرِ نَبَّهُ عَلَى الْمَسَائِلْ تَتَعَلَّكَ So we are now going to take the khalaq, and we're going to talk about that in detail. But Sheikh Al-Fawzan, he says, because his, his explanation is very short, he just says that the fourth martaba starts here, but there on after the author then mentions masail that we're going to cover later that are connected to this rabi' to the khalq. So he says that there are certain masail that the author he that goes on to mention after that will come later on. But we'll mention them now and then we'll go back to khalq. From them, al-masat al-ula annahu la ta'arad bayna al-qadr wa sharr 
there is no contradiction between the pre-decree and the shara, meaning what Allah Azza wa Jal loves for his ibadah to carry out with that which he has decreed. There is no contradiction. Second mas'ala, لا تعارض بين التقدير الله وقوع المعاصي وبغضه لها There is no contradiction between that which is decreed by Allah Azza wa Jal, the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal, and that which occurs by way of sins. And Allah's dislike for that. And we have, inshallah, we'll elaborate upon that, but we've already mentioned in previous lessons. Because one may wonder that if every single thing is created in the heavens and earth, everything in existence is from the qadr of Allah, then why will we have things that Allah dislikes in it? Why will he allow that? We've elaborated upon that. This is the mas'ala. There's no contradiction. And the third mas'ala that we will take as well, لا تعارض بين تقدير الله لأفعال العباد وقونهم يفعلونها بإختيارهم. There is no contradiction from that which Allah Azza wa Jal has decreed from the actions of His slaves and that they are carried out by إختيارهم. But they are carried out by the slaves with a free choice. They have choice. There is no contradiction between this and what Allah has decreed. So that was Sheikh Al Fawzan. Now Sheikh Uthayameen. So Sheikh Uthayameen mentions regarding the statement of the author Fama min mukhlukin fil ard wala fi sama. إلا الله خالقه سبحانه لا خالق غيره ولا رب سوى. Regarding this, then the Sheikh Uthaymin he says the following. This statement هذا صحيح بلا شك. This statement meaning that there is nothing in the creation from the heavens and the earth except that Allah as a wajal is his creator. There is no creator other than him. And there is no Lord besides him. Shaykh Uthiyameen, he says, this statement is correct without any doubt. Walihada, regarding this statement, there is proof. And the proof that he mentions is athari wa nathari. Athari is where it pertains to delil of nas, Quran and Sunnah, or a textual evidence. Nathari is something that we can observe. Our sense is yudrik. It's something that we can observe and comprehend through our aql and intelligence and through our senses. So we'll mention them. Amad dalilul athari. So then he starts off, rahimullah ta'ala, by bringing you proof. Al athari, which is the first one, is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allahu khaliqa kulli shay. Allah, He is the creator of all things. Surah Zumar, verse 62. Just put on the side notes in brackets and I'll explain afterwards. Put down that this is am, general. Put in your bracket by the ayah. Another athari dalil is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah At-Tur. Verse 35 and 36, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, Were they created by nothing? Or were they themselves the creators? And Allah then goes on to mention, Am خَلَقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بَلْ لَا يُقِنُونَ Or did they, Create the heavens and the earth. Then Allah responds to that and says, Nay, but they have no they have no belief. So this is another proof that they are not the creators, 
that all that is in existence, Allah Azza wa Jal is the creator. Then Shaykh Uthiyameen, he says, فَلَا يُمْكِنُوا أَنْ يُجِدَ شَيْءٍ فِي السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا اللَّهُ خَالِقُهُ وَحْدَهُ So it is not possible that anything in existence in the heavens and the earth except that Allah is his creator. Allah is alone in creating. Then we'll miss a bit and then we'll come back down and we continue with the Shaykh's words where he says, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is creator of all things. And there is no creator except Allah azza wa jal. فَيَجِبُوا الْإِيمَانِ بِعُمُومُ الْخَلْقِ اللَّهِ So it is obligatory to have belief in the generality that Allah is the creator of all things. حَتَّى أَعْمَالُ الْعِبَادِ Even the actions of the slaves Allah is his creator. لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى The proof of that is so that even the actions now they min dhimni khalqihi they are from the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal. قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ اللَّهُ خَالِقُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of all things. We said that this is عَام وَالْعَمَلُ الْإِنسَانِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ the actions, Allah says he has created all things. So the actions of a person is a thing. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَخَلَقَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَقَدَّرَهُ تَقْدِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created all things and has decreed it in a perfect proportion. Al-Furqan verse 2. وَفِيهِ آيَةٌ خَاصَةٌ So those are the adilla al-athari am. Then the then Sheikh Uthni mean he brings a proof which is khasa. And he says, وَوَوَ خَلْقُ الْأَفْعَالِ الْعِبَادِ فَقَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ لِقَوْمِهِ وَاللَّهُ خَلَقَكُمْ وَمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Surah Al-Saffat verse 96 when the Prophet Abraham والسلام, said to his people that verily Allah has created you. Allah is your creator. And that which you carry out, the actions that you do, Allah is likewise its creator. Then Shaykh Uthiyamin, he mentions something about al-mastariya wal-ism al-mus'ul. Like in the shahid from all that kalam is that Allah Azawajal is the creator of human beings and the actions are a part of human beings, so it entails and it is a created thing. So now we move on to Shaykh Uthiyameen, he says, that the actions of the slave are a creation of Allah. فَتَقْدِيرُهُ أَنْ نَقُولُ So we can say, in essence it means, إِنَّ الْفِعْلَ الْعَبْدِ نَاشُنْ عَنْ أَمْرَيْنِ That the action of a slave, it stems from two things. The action of a slave, it stems from two things. عَزِيمَةُ صَادِقَةُ وَقُدْرَةُ تَامَةُ these two things is that a person has, number one, a firm will, determined to carry out that action. And the second one, that he has the complete capability to do that thing that he intends and has firm will to do, that he has the ability. Mithal dhalik, example upon this, so you wanted to do an action from the actions. An action from the action. actions. So anyone, so if you was to intend to do an action and you wanted to do something, it must be preceded with two things. Before anyone does any action or intends to do an action, 
the Shaykh, he says, it has to proceed with two things. First one is, as we have mentioned, that firm will, determined to do it. Ala fi'lihi, determined to do that action. لِأَنَّكَ لَوْ لَا تَعْزِمْ مَا فَعَلْتَهُ Because if you don't have that firm will to do it, and that determination to do it, then that action won't be carried out. So you won't carry it out. The second one is You must have that ability. If you don't have the ability to do a certain action, you won't carry that action out because you don't have the ability. So then look how it comes in. This is how we can see by another how our senses and our aql and our intellect can grasp this. If we didn't have that firm resolve to do a particular thing, we wouldn't do it. If we didn't have the ability, we wouldn't do it. So then Shaykh Uthiyameen, he says, فَالَّذِي خَلَكَ فِيكَ هَذِي القدرة, The one that has created this ability, meaning grant created and gave you this ability to carry it out, who Allah? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَهُوَ الَّذِي عَوْدَعَ فِيكَ الْعَظِيمَةِ And it is Him that has put that resolve and that firm will to do it. So Allah has granted you these things in order for you to carry it out. Another angle, the Shaykh, he says, Annaqula, al-fi'l wasful fa'il. So we say, an action, an action is an attribute of the one who does the action, the doer. Al-fi'l. Is this understood so far? Is anybody struggling to understand this? It's all okay so far? Okay. Yeah, then, as'alakum. Second angle, fi'l, action, is an attribute of the person that does the action, the doer. Wal-wasfu tabi'u lil so the attribute follows in suit and is a part of the one that is described, meaning the one that does the action. فَكَمَا أَنَّ الْإِنسَانِ بِذَاتِهِ مَخْلُوكٌ لِلَّهِ So just as if a person with his essence is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his being body is a creation of Allah azza wa jal, then it automatically necessitates So if a person himself, the body is created, a human being is created, then anything that the human being does by way of action is also created. Why? Because an attribute is a part of the individual. Mathalan, let me give you some examples. Let's say, Mathalan, Abu Idris is a very skilled fighter, kickboxer, and when he strikes his jabs and kicks, they are of perfection and speed. So then when you say that his skills are immense and incredible and extremely, and you describe those skills as fast, and powerful and slick and they're going on when you're explaining these attributes these attributes automatically necessitate so we understand that these skills belong to who the one that is who is Abu Idris <laughs> whether I can do him is another thing but you know what I mean I used to be able to Lekin, do you understand so that action and that sifat is a part of the one that does it. They go in line. You can't separate them two. 
So, if we say that a human being is makhluk, then likewise, his actions follow suit. Do you want any more examples or is that understood? Understood? Okay. Okay, turn the page and inshallah, the statement of the author, la khalik, la khalik ghayru. There is no creator besides him. Now there's kalam, but just to make it simple, this whole passage is regarding a shubha that one can possibly understand. The author, he said, that there is no creator besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That word referred to as khaliq. However, that khaliq, sometimes in the Arabic language, it is utilized upon a creation. Mathalan, فَإِنَّ الْمُصَوِّرِينَ يُعَذِّبُونَ The picture makers, they will be punished on the day of judgment. يُقَالَ لَهُمْ أَحْيُ مَا خَلَقْتُمْ it will be said to them, bring to life that which you created. So we have khalaqtum. But here the author states that there is no other creator besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But yet we have, also we have the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So blessed be Allah. The best of creators. It is Sigat al Jam. It re Khaliqeen Yadilu ala Jam. It indicates the meaning that there is more than one. Whereas the author he has said, La Khalika Ghayru. There is no Lord or create Afwan. There is no Lord besides him. But yet that we have these evidences. So Sheikh Uthiyya mean. Then he wants to talk and he says, فَهُنَاكَ الْخَالِقِ لَكِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى هُوَ أَحْسُنُ الْخَالِقِينَ فَمَا الْجُوَابِ عَنْ قَوْلِ الْمُؤَلِّفِ So how then do we respond regarding to the statement of the author? How do we explain this? And these are important arguments that we need to comprehend and understand because أَحْلَ الْحَوَى The people of desires and rhetoric, they use these type of arguments. So Sheikh Uthiyameen, he says, أَنَّ الْخَلْقَ الَّذِي نَنْسِبُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ هُوَ الْإِيجَادِ وَالْتَبْدِيلَ الْعَعْيَانِ مِنْ عَيْنٍ لِلْأُخْرَى He says, the khalq, when we say al-khalq, the creation, and when we say, and we attribute that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is not the same meaning as it is when we do it for the creation. Rather, when it is referred and attributed to Allah, it refers to as ijad, the bringing into existence, or the changing. The changing of essence or substance from one thing to another. And that is only befitting to for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from the creation. So, for example... There are things that are occurring in the Arabic language that one thing may change to another, but it's not brought about from nothing. There's something precedes it. So, Sheikh Uthaymeen, he gives the example, Mathalan, there are certain things that are one particular sifa, one, one description or attribute that later on becomes something else. However, the asal of what it was was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look, he gives it an example. For example, if you get a carpenter and then you give him wood that is taken from a tree and then he starts his work and crafting and carving and then there on after he makes that piece of wood into a door, a door that is utilized methylon in the house. In the Arabic language, we will say that from that bark of tree, making it from that into a door, 
they refer to that as khalqan however lakin laysa al khalq alladhi yaqtasu bi al khaliq but not the sifa and the attribute of khalq that we attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fa huwa al ijad min al adam the creator Allah azza wa jal can bring about something when it doesn't exist from nothing whereas this carpenter only was able to make it into a door after he had mother a, a thing which was created from Allah azza wa jal so the manner when we say that there is no lord and khaliq is only Allah azza wa jal is giving that divine attribute of bringing into existence that which did not exist okay next point the statement of the author wa ma dhalik faqad amara al-ibad bi ta'atihi wa ta'at rusulihi wa nahaum an ma'siyatihi so if allah has a wajal is a creator now it's moving on the author is first establishing that every single thing in this dunya even the actions of the slaves are all a created thing then it, one can misunderstand that so then the author clarifies the next point and he says ma'adhalik meaning that being said that even the actions of the of the slave are allah's creation they have still been commanded to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obedient to the messengers and they have been prohibited to fall into disobedience that is haram for them to do that so even though the actions are a created thing still this is mentioned and will elaborate upon that yani mal umum al khalqihi wa rububiyyatihi lam yatruk al ibad hamala so with the generality that Allah is the creator and with the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's lordship Allah azza wa jal then did not leave the creation without purpose or direction and Allah azza wa jal lam yarfa anhum al ikhtiyar Allah azza wa jal left that attribute of ikhtiyar meaning they can choose they can choose and Allah did not lift that from them that sifa that attribute of a slave has a choice whether he does good or whether he does bad whether he believes or whether he disbelieves that ikhtiyar has been left for the slave wa amru bi dhalika amr al mumkin and that command it is possible the one that has been commanded is the creation of Allah and his actions is the creation of Allah and saying that they are still commanded with good and they have been uh, forbade to do that which is haram walaw kana al-insan mujbiran ala amalihi so the shaykh then he says had this not been the case be meaning that you've got the free will to do if it was the case that you were compelled and forced upon particular actions or an action shall we say that all the actions that you are doing you are compelled mujbar mujbar means you're forced compelled to do lakana amruhu amran bi ghayri mumkin then that command that was given then would not be possible it would not be possible so allah has a wajal meaning who can explain that to me before i did you understand that bit okay walaw kana al insan mujbiran if a person was compelled to do the actions that he carries out he has no say or she has no say she is forced or he is forced to do these actions then the sheikh he says then you wouldn't have a command then it wouldn't be possible to have a command who can explain that 
first of all, listen to, li listen to the question. Sheikh Uthimin says, if it was the case that mankind was compelled to do all of their actions, the amr of him being commanded to do good, it wouldn't be possible for him to do it. Ahsant. That's the answer. If somebody is compelled to do something, then it's going to occur. He has no choice. Whereas Allah has commanded his slaves to do good, but they have a choice. So this argument, and we're going to, the reason that you should understand this later on, we're going to talk about the deviant sects that I've heard in this fourth point regarding the Jabariyyah, Qadariyyah, what they say. Because you have individuals that say that, but well, I don't want to mention it now, but do you understand this point? Yeah. A proof of that, Shaykh Uthaymin, he says, Allah, he says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah Azawajal does not burden a soul more than it can bear. وَهَذَا يُدِلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُمْ قَادِرُونَ عَلَىٰ الْفِعْلِ الطَّاعَةِ This is a clear indication, this verse, that they are able to carry out actions of obedience. And they are capable to refrain from disobedience. وَأَنَّهُمْ غَيْرَ مُقْرَهِينَ عَلَىٰ ذَلِكَ And they are not forced or compelled. Because this ayah wouldn't make any sense if everybody was compelled to do. We had no choice. Then this verse would have no meaning. Allah does not burden a person more than the soul can bear. Ayyawah. Fima bad. Allah knows best. If we were forced to do the action, we don't know what action we would be forced to do. Inshallah, it's coming. That particular part, I've tried, you know how much I've had to prepare to try to bring you a structure where it will be easy for you to understand because some of the books that talk about one thing then they drift onto another part then this particular part they mention here then comes there on afterwards as well and alhamdulillah from going back and forth with our brothers and even Abu Hakim Hafizullah Ta'ala we discussed it's good to give you a structure where we're talking about what now? the four things if we understand the whole purpose of why the ulama have mentioned it in such a way that if you then understand the four things of what qadr consists of and understand them correctly, then what comes after will be easy for you to understand because then you will, all of the principles, anything, you will just make this applicable. You will just say, okay, alhamdulillah, qadr consists of these four things. And we understand what ilm is. We understand what kitabah is. We understand what mashia is. And we understand what khalq is. And based upon the principles here, anything that comes by way of shubha and doubt, we, we use these four to this. And then it will be easier for you to understand where the deviant sects, their arguments, and how to refute them. Okay. There on after... Uh, the author he mentions وَهُوَ سُبْحَانُهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ وَالْمُحْسِنِينَ وَالْمُقْسِطِينَ وَيَرْضَ عَنِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَلَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ So then the author he mentions that what Allah Azza wa Jal loves. So even though Allah has created all things, he is, that Allah mentions the things that he loves. And we've kind of already touched about that or, already, but... Then he mentions, and Allah loves those who carry out righteous actions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like the disbelievers. This is all to show you that even after Allah has created and given you a choice, that, you're, that they are things which Allah loves and dislikes. So as for the statement, al-kafirin, la yuhibbul kafirin, that Allah does not like the kafirin, then there's a principle that comes from this. Sheikh Uthiyameen, he says, this, or uses the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَإِن تَوَلَّوْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ And if they was to turn away, meaning from the way of Allah Azza wa Jal, that which is khair and salim, sirat al-mustaqeem, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like the disbelievers. Qa'idah, principle. Sheikh Uthiyameen, he says, مَا عَنَّ الْقُفْرَ 
waqiya bi mashiyatihi that this kufr where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he doesn't like the disbelieving ones so this kufr that these disbelievers are upon this disbelief it still occurs bi mashiyatihi with his will lakin so this kufr or this disbelief is in the qawm or in the existence of Allah's creation. However, Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't like it. So, Shaykh Uthimeen, he says, لا ولكن لا يلزم من وقوعه بمشيته أن يكون محبوبا له سبحانه وتعالى. That's the principle. Just because a particular, uh, for disbelief occurs in Allah's creation, that does not necessitate because Allah allowed it from His will that Allah Azza wa Jal loves it. And we have already mentioned in previous lessons regarding the answer to this, that then why about why did it come around then? And we've also mentioned that from some of the things that we perceive to be shar, which are shar, which is mukhalifa of what Allah has legislated. But in the in the in, in the uh, perspective of qawniya, there is khair in it. Then we move on to the statement of the author: "Wala yarda an al qawm al fasiqin." Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not like the people or a qawm of sinners. Al fasiqin carries the meaning of sinners if it's translated. However, Sheikh Uthiyamin he says. Al-Fasiqeen can carry two meanings. So put down Fasiqeen and then from it two arrows. One, it carries the meaning Al-Kafir. Wal-Fasiqeen, the second meaning Al-Asi. The disobedient one. So Al-Fasiq can carry the meaning as Kafir, disbeliever. And it can carry the meaning of Asi, a sinner. والفاسق, the definition of it in Arabic وَهُوَ الْخَارِجْ عَنْ تَعَةِ اللَّهِ That which exits the obedience of Allah Or other wording That which leaves the realms of obedience of Allah قَدْ يُرَادُ بِهِ الْكَافِرِ وَقَدْ يُرَادُ بِهِ الْعَاسِي As we said, it can carry the meaning as a disbeliever or a sinner So now we're going to give you proofs as for the first one, in the Quran, that fasik is used to carry the meaning of a disbeliever. قال الله عز وجل أَفَمَنْ كَانَ مُؤْمِنًا كَمَنْ كَانَ فَاسِقًا لَا يَسْتَوُونَ Is the believer in similitude to the fasik? And here it refers to as the disbeliever. There is no comparison. Then Allah mentions in, in the verse, as for those who believe and carry out righteous actions, for them is paradise, and uh, for that which they, what they used to do. Uh, as for the ones that fell into sin, and here can mean, carry the meaning of disbelief, then for them is the hellfire. To the end of the verse. So Shaykh al Thiyameen he says that Surah Al Sajda, verse 18 to 20, Fal Murad bil Fasik Huna al Kafir. So the intent in this verse, Al Fasik carries the meaning of disbeliever. As for the second example, it can mean a rebellious or sinful person, is a statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ayu al Ladina Amanu in Ja akum Fasikum bin Naba in Fatabayanu. Or you who believe, if a rebellious, evil person, meaning a sinner, comes to you with news, then verify it. So fasiq here, Sheikh Uthiyameen, he says, means the sinful one. Also, that's an, a side point, a point of benefit from this ayah is, 
And if we know somebody to be a fasik, somebody to be rebellious, somebody who's not thicker, and they come with news or they come with a khabar, a piece of news, then you should verify it. You should not take it at first value and believe straight away. Then Sheikh Uthiyameen, he goes on to mention, however, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like the fasiqeen, does not like a qawm, a people who are sinners. La ha'ulai wa la ha'ulai. Whether they're disbelievers or whether they are sinners. وَلَكِنْ الْفَاسِقِينَ بِمَعْنَ الْكَافِرِينَ لَا يَرْضَ عَنْهُمْ مُطْلَقًا As for the fasiqin that carries the meaning of disbelieving, of disbelievers, then Allah is not pleased with them in any way of all. Mutlaqan, absolutely not pleased with them at all. وَأَمَّا الْفَاسِقُونَ بِمَعْنَ الْعُصَاتِ As for الْفَاسِقُونَ which carries the meaning of sinners, Allah is not pleased with them in regards of the sins they have fallen into. But Allah is pleased with them in regards to the obedience, the acts of obedience they carry out. So Fasik has how many meanings? Two meanings. Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like both of them? What's the difference of one is a sinner, one is a kafir? However, regarding their a'mal, regarding their actions, then regarding the, the kafir, what about him? There's nothing that Allah loves of the disbeliever. But as for the one who's a sinner, the sins that he does, Allah is not pleased with. But as for the good that he does, the ta'a, the obedience, then Allah is pleased with that. This is why also that if we see our brother or if we see our sister fall short, then yes, we dislike the sin. But however, we don't write them off in totality. We try to cover their sins and we try to invite them back to the straight path. For verily, there are elements that Allah loves of them. So do not forsake the one that there's elements that Allah may love. And in general, we should want for our brother and our sister what we love for ourselves. We all fall short. If our ayub and our shortcomings was to come out, then how would we want our community and how would we want our brothers and sisters to behave towards us? We would, we would want them to cover our sins. We would want them to have forgiveness and have mercy and show us that. So just the same way that how you would want to be treated, then remember that when your brother and sister fall short. So in conclusion, this is taken from Samahat al-Sheikh Muhammad Ibrahim al-Mufti al-Sabiq. So fasara ma fil qawn bi hadhain shay'ain. فسار الإيمان بالقدر بأربع أشياء. so after الحمد لله studying then it, it comes that that إيمان with in in having having belief in قدر then necessitates four things. so these are just bullet points of these four things again. then we finish on that. number one Al-Iman bi ilm Allah al-Qadim. To have that Iman in the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal al-Qadim. Al-Qadim here meaning al-Azali. And Azali we said is no beginning. Number two, Al-Iman bi anna ma alimahu katabahu fi sabiq. To have that belief that that which Allah Azza wa Jal knew by way of knowledge. Then he wrote that down. Hey, fil lawh al mahfuz. Thalith al iman bi anna ma sha Allah kan. To have that belief in the Mashiach of Allah, which he words and says to have belief in that which Allah willed, then comes to existence, has come about. Or will occur. 
And the fourth one regarding al-khalq, he words it and says, al-iman bi anna ma min wujud, that which is present, to have belief, that which is present, then that is what Allah brought about into existence. فَمَا مِنْ مُوجُودٍ مِنَ الْمُوجُودَاتِ So there is nothing that, is in the, that, that exists in the existence إِلَّا هُوَ مَشْمُولٌ بِهَذِهِ الْأَرْبَعِ There is nothing that, is, that exists in this cone, in this existence except that it comprises of these four things. These four things, anything that is in existence comprises of these four things. And inshallah, we'll round about that on that note. Jazakumullah khairan. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Before I round up, how is the finding of the student and explaining things to your student and doing muraja together and teaching? How is that going? Is it going or not? Has everybody got a student? Or at least a study partner that you're going over your stuff? Everybody. Everyone. Okay. So you haven't got a partner, you haven't got a you haven't got a student. At least try to explain because even you trying to explain to them and going over and over and over, even if they don't catch what you're saying, you will be more firm in your ma'lumat. So the very least you will become more firm and in your understanding. And trust me, they will know certain things. They will know. Like even if they, don't, even, even if they didn't catch four points, they catch that everything that Allah has in this creation, Allah is the creator. Surely the, try. That is not an excuse that we will accept. So everyone has to have somebody that they are teaching and going over. Agreed? Because we need to spread the ilm. And this is one of the ways that knowledge will spread. And inshallah the ajr will fall back on you. If you teach one person, then that person teaches somebody. Every time those two individuals act upon that knowledge, you get two rewards. If they teach another person, another person, and it's four, then whatever that four does, it comes back, alhamdulillah, on you. And it just goes on. Sadaq al And that's more for me as well. <laughs> And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. I'll call you, call you, I'll 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 call you